Welcome to the Blue Futon. If you watched the last review, you kind of know what's coming out of the box because it came out last time. It's a double feature. This one is Smoking Aces 2, Assassin's Ball. Have I seen it? So this doesn't look like I have. There's little things on it still. The protector that's supposed to stop from stealing. Oh yeah. But hey, I'm gonna go watch Smoking Aces 2, Assassin's Ball, and I'll let you know what I think of this movie. Smoking Aces 2 was a straight to DVD sequel of the original Smoking Aces. So the people you might know in this movie is Vinnie Jones, Clay Crawford, and Tom Berenger. So what's it about? Is it a direct sequel to the first one? No, not really. They do add Buddy Israel's name. It's kind of like name drop it, but that's about it. So what's it about? Assassins go to one location and they try to kill one person by April 19th at 3 a.m. That's really the premise. Of course, there are going to be twists and turns along the way, but are you going to catch them? Do you know? Are they simplistic? Kind of, yeah. But let's go with the good of the movie. The good of the movie, for a direct-to-DVD sequel, it wasn't that bad production as a whole. The acting was as good as what was given on the pages, and some of it was fun. Other than that, it was a very not that good of a movie. So let's go. The writing of it was pretty poor. You kind of saw the twists and turns all the way there. You kind of knew something was happening. And the story was just kind of weird as a whole. The whole FBI and having their own assassination rings and it's just kind of weird as well. Also, we'll go with costume design of this. For this being a direct sequel to the first one, and this costume design makes no sense. Half the stuff they're wearing reminds me of stuff they should be wearing in the 60s and 70s. And some of the special effects were just really, really very, very bad. Like RPGs going and you get pretty bad special effect blowing ups and you just feel like, I could have done this on my computer or go to YouTube and download one of those special effects on there. And also, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of these movies where, oh, I don't know you're an FBI agent. How do I know? What was that? What was that? I'm sorry. No one's going to notice. But huh? What was that? Someone's coming? What are you? T huh? What are you talking about? I'm a normal person. Like stuff like that. Like, come on now. Really? And there's also a scene where, I guess, those three brothers from the original one, their families in this one as well, like the dad, another sister, another brother, and baby boy, going to a Navy base. I'm looking down for this reason. A Navy base will not have two guards with just a regular chain link fence with the ammo depot literally, oh, I got in the gate. Oh, there's the hugest weapon warehouse ever, literally 10 feet from the gate. What would you know? Huh. Stuff like that kind of really bothers me now. And also just the most unrealistic violence. I mean, yeah, I could do some unrealistic violence for some like shits and giggles. But like when you have movies now like John Wick that are being more realistic and you're like, oh, that's gritty and real. This was more of like RPG. Huh! And then it explodes right here. And I'm just like, whoa, that hurt. <laughs> what do you know? I'm okay though. So stuff like that and just, and the assassin's ball really makes absolutely no sense. It has nothing to do. There's no ball. It's a jazz club. Maybe you should call it the jazz club ball. The jazz club assassin's ball. I don't know. But overall, go to the movie. It's a short movie. If you want to have an okay 30 minutes, that's fine. The acting was as good as given on the page. So you got to give it to the actors for actually trying to make this a fun movie. Other than that, sloppy writing, really bad CGI, stupid character decisions of how these people are professional assassins and FBI agents. And they're like, choo 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 It's like you could just be like, boom. But no, you're like, it's like, no, that's not how you shoot a gun. If you want to kill someone, let's go. Anywho. Oh, and also, if it's a directed DVD sequel, why have unrated and rated version? Does it really matter? I don't think it does. Just have one version, because the unrated was two minutes longer. Really? Two minutes made it unrated? I don't think so. Anywho, Smoke and Aces 2 will receive a one and a half, had five blue futons, which equals a 30%. Now let's see what critics and user scores gave this movie. Even if there is one, I never really checked a direct DVD sequel. But let's go check it out! All right, on Rotten Tomato, we have zero critic scores and a 22% user scores. And there's no critic consensus. Looking down, there are four critics. From what I see, usually this with four you have a consensus or at least a user 
or at least a critic score, and it looks like one fresh, three rotten. Do the math, that's a 25%. So that's why I'm gonna give it a 25% for the critic scores. But overall, Ho-Hum sequel, they put it in the pack for a reason. I don't know if that's the only reason they got rid of it. I don't know if it's sold by itself or you only get it in the Blu-ray pack. But hey, who knows? If you wanna watch it, I just don't recommend watching it. It's cheesy, kinda of stupid, makes no sense, but the ending is kind of satisfying. But this is Chase Sag with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of this Blue Futon Utopia. You Blue Futonians, and ring that bell. Hey, like I said, let's get those subscribers up, please. But anywho, thank you for watching, and have a great day. And just FYI, if you go in the middle of an alley and there's just a random town and there's just a random jazz club and it just looks completely fake, don't go there because the whole scenario is fake. The FBI needs to get their stuff together. You need a bigger budget because that is not that good of a hideout.